Hi, today I'm going to show you how to paint this beautiful Spanish door with beautiful, colorful flowers with easy techniques. I'm Alison Pryor and I teach acrylic paintings for the beginner step by step in real time so you can follow along with me. Let's get started painting. Okay, so let's just put a little edge down here at the bottom of the door, you know, just a little piece down here under the door so that it looks like we have a little edge or a little step or something there. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some red and some blue and put two of them together. I'm not even going to mix it very much. And then I'm going to take my flat brush, same flat brush that we've been using. Okay, and I'm going to take the chiseled edge and I'm going to touch and I'm going to pull. I'm not going to I'm not doing anything else, only touch and pull, okay? That's it. That's the little edge to the bottom of. It's hard to see because it's dark. I'll add a little bit of white to it there so you can see it, okay? But you try the purpley color. I'll just add a little bit of white there. Whoops. Crooked. All right, that's no big deal. Anyway, you can see my mistakes. That's okay. All right, so we're just going to straight over, straight over, straight over, so we can get a nice straight line. Straight over. There we go. That's just the bottom of the door. All right, so that's just pretty simple. Now, so we can see this here, let's put a little bit of a highlight on that. So. I'm just going to take a bit of white and add it to the colors that I made right here. Just lighten it up a little bit. There we go. Same flat brush. And take that and put it on the top. Because so you want to keep the dark underneath so that you can see that it's a little. Alright, so if you can, just pull over. You have to be careful. There we go. I'm just making little strokes. If you can make one swooping stroke, that'd be great. But because I'm doing the video, you know the you know the drill. I'm just standing here trying to get comfortable. And if I was doing this, I'd be sitting down in front of the painting. And then I'd be able to have more control over my hand. So uh, let's see if we can get this on here without making too much of a mess. There we go. That's marvelous. Good. And down here, I just want to, you can put a, whatever you want down there. You can put steps down there. You can, you know, use your imagination, look up some pictures of, of you know, flat surfaces or a, a ground um, and put some, anything you want down here because it's just the ground where they come out the door and step on the concrete. So I just have a dark background and just to see what this looks like, let's make some, take a bit of chalk and take a bit of chalk and, and start planning out probably some stones. Maybe there's some stones on there and just make a few and see, you know, how that works out. Let's just try that. And, um, you can make steps in there if you want. Well, let's try stones for for uh, an experiment. Let's see, let's see. So they don't have to be tidy. As you can see, they're not that tidy. So take a small flat brush, chiseled edge. Okay, just a, a small flat brush. A little smaller than the one we were just using. And we're going to try and add some color, maybe a little bit of color. How about a bit of blue? Let's, let's experiment. A bit of blue. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. A bit of blue and a bit of red. A bit of white. Let's try that. So just put that in where you made that. And you can go outside lines, of course, and everything. So just put, try that. So there's one stone. Okay, let's try another one. I don't know. If we don't like it, uh, if I don't like it and I don't think it's 
because uh, I am going to I'm just going to go over that one with a little bit I'll leave a so just fill it in first and then we'll highlight them a little bit and see if that helps so there we go put in your stones just follow your little chalk and then you can come outside lines or anything whatever you want to do so you can make different colors if you want uh, I don't know add a bit of green deer blue or something like that just just to play around with it and we'll add another one here as long as the bottom is straight the top can be a little rounded it don't matter just try to get a straight line on the bottom straight line on the bottom and fill in the top there we go so we get a little bit of a straight line on the bottom all right so let's try a straight line on the bottom and a little tiny hump not much you want and just pull over that one's a bit bright I want a shadow let's try a straight line under here and a little bit of a hump something like we did in the rocks I have videos on how to three steps to painting rocks now I know these are flat stones but it's basically all the same techniques so straight line and just fill in the top okay so you got some nice little and you can put as many as you want that, that you think will work for you. I'm just going to do a couple. Straight line and then just thicken it up on the top there. Okay. That will make it a bit easy for you. And then you can highlight the top of those just to bring them out. Okay. So just do the top. Keep the bottom. Good. This one here lost a shadow so you just put it back in that's all you lose shadows just put them back in good just a little shadow just a little shadow on the bottom there because you don't want to to have it just a plain blue and then just highlight the top that's all there we go highlight top with a bit of white on your blue just to brighten them up a little bit and just on the top haphazardly it doesn't have to be perfect straight line on top so you're just trying to highlight them and they're kind of you know the, like the, the flat rocks that you buy like slates all right good so don't forget a flat line flat straight line I should say a straight line all right so your straight line then you fill it in to make it thick on top and then you keep your shadow and then you highlight the top now if you got any problems with that let me know I'll I'll guide you along either in an email or or whatever way I can help you and you can go over them a few times till you're happy with them because they might be a little you know annoying <laughs> and what you can do is if you don't like it just wipe it all out with your dark paint again just wipe right over it and start over and if you still can't get it then put in a few steps or even just any colors at all just to give it a rugged look so it won't be so I'm just gonna put another one here straight line see and I'm gonna make it thicker on top lost my shadow so we'll put some more shadow in there good see it's like little rocks there hope nobody trips up on them all right so we got that much done now if the background down here is too plain you can get your dark background again I think we used uh, black and blue and red and add a little bit of white to it try not to mix it too much wipe it off in your tissue okay just so that and just scrub on a few highlights in between the rocks just to give it a bit of um because too plain the background was too plain so let's let's just put i'm just using my small flat brush and i'm just sort of scrubbing it i don't have much paint on my brush almost like dry brushing so it gives it a bit more of a texture or a little more 
interest, we'll say. So we'll just add the blue and the red, whatever colors you want. So when you get your color, see the paint that's on there? I know it's a bit blurry there now, but... Alright, so just wipe that off on your tissue. And what's left over, just scrub at that background color around your rocks. Okay, just to give it a... Here we go, just straighten up that line. Yep, just to give it a, more of a natural look because it was kind of like just black in the background or really dark. So we need to just add some color to it. Just trying to show you that you can do whatever you want. Even if you're looking at a picture and you're using it as a guide, you don't have to go by that picture exactly. Just use it. It's and people go by several different pictures. You can look them up and see, you know, what other kinds of grounds or steps you can make, doors and stuff. You can still go follow my video and then, you know, get ideas from other things, other pictures. Okay, make sure they're royalty free. Make sure that you don't copy someone else's work, okay? Because it's more fun doing it your own way anyway. Good. You can also put, you know, a really dark color, say black and red and blue again. You can put a really dark color right underneath that straight line that you made underneath the rock. Just a little bit of a shadow here. That gives it more of a... All these little things that you do. These help bring your painting to life. All these little details. So you started off with a plain background. See how that sort of makes it jump out a bit more again? So, all these little details certainly, and you could do, you can use all kinds of techniques and you can try them out and don't be afraid. Try it and if it doesn't work, just go back over it with some paint. Don't worry about it. Just try it out. And if it doesn't work out, just paint over it. But don't paint over the whole painting, just the area that you had a problem with, okay, that you were experimenting with. So experiment with small areas at a time, okay? So just say, if you're doing the flowers on top there, well, if you experiment with that, that might be a little harder to, to wipe out. You'll have to re redo the whole background again if you did that. So some things might be a little easier to fix than others or, or experiment with. So down here would be easier because you get that done, you don't like it, you just wipe it out and you're only dealing with this one area. Uh, the door itself may be a little difficult if you experimented a bit too much, but you know, if you don't mind, like say if we did something with that door, this blue door, and we didn't like it, we could just go back to the blue, but then we got to do all this again, all the shadows and everything. So. Um, experiment as best you can and if you don't mind going back over things like that that's fine but try a small area first so let's move on okay let's go with our handy dandy chalk again and let's put a couple of nice little flower pots here now you can have any kind of flower pot you want here okay I'm just gonna put one in and make it look a little Spanishy so I'm gonna just decide how high up I want to go so I'm thinking around here. I'm just going to make a line. Just a line. See if, I can, see if we can see it better this way. There we go. That's a bit better. I'll just focus in a little bit for you. And all right. There we go. And we will Make a line on top, which is short, and a longer line on the bottom. All right? So make the line longer on the bottom. That will make it easier for you. And then you are going to, you can curve it in like this. See that? Curve it in. And curve that in. And because it's chalk, if you don't like the way it's shaped up, you just get rid of it. I just put some... Okay, so just get rid of it by a damp brush, any kind of brush, just damp, just wipe it off in your tissue and just done. See, 
I love the chalk. Okay, perfect. So, and then we'll try again. So let's see, let's see. Now, if you find this hard to do, you can't get what you're looking for, then do it on a piece of paper first, and then you can practice it. And then you can put it on your canvas, or you can draw it on a piece of paper, and then, so the same over here, and then you can trace it, your sketch, your drawing, onto your canvas. Okay, so let's do the same here. You can have different pots on either side. You can have small pots and big pots, whatever you want. I'm just doing it that way just because. No reason. I just like to have fun and experiment. Okay, perfect. Now I'm just going to make it a little bit of a grayish color, I think. Now you can have any color you want. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just making some black. Maybe I'll put a bit of red in there. Okay, and some white. Just to gray it up a little bit. Purplish, grayish, purple color. And then I'm going to fill it in with my small filbert brush. Well, it doesn't be filbert, it can be flat. And it's uh, it's not bristle, it's the... Um, there we go. Sable or synthetic. I was looking at some polyester brushes the other day. And they won't work if you end up buying polyester. I don't think they're very good. They've got really shiny bristles on them. Oops. And I don't think the paint would stick to them. They're like house you know how you buy uh, brushes house paint brushes and they uh, they got these shiny slippery bristles on them they won't work in your paintings but the softer bristles will so like this one here this one here is a bristle brush and this one has a top on it where all the bristles separate and that's what I, I like to use for my flowers and trees and all kinds of things you know anything to do with texture and uh, you can open it up you know by tapping at it tap it into your hand and look see how it, see how it separates that's what you want to separate and it's not straight across they're kind of pointy out, pointy out, it's a new word, kind of pointy, and they, uh, so it's a, it's a different brush for sure, and uh, anyway, I'm going to continue on, now I'll stop talking about that, but I want you to know about the brushes, I want you to know what you can use, because a lot of people do get frustrated, and it's not even their fault, it's just the brushes are not, you know, they're not working for you, okay, so that's not your fault. And once you know that, then at least you can go buy the brushes that will work for you, okay? Because there's no sense wasting all your money on brushes that don't work for you. Now let's fill in this one. All right. If you end up going outside the lines, well, we're going to be putting flowers there. And we can uh, fix that up. Let's go right to the top here, over here too. Let's go on the ground. It's sitting on the ground. Okay. There we go. Good. So fill that in and if don't you don't have to go by the chalk. Now that you got the chalk drawn, you can thicken it up. You can make it bigger on top. You know, and turn your brush, ch uh, the chiseled edge, or flat ways. So move your brush around, like, like if you're doing something, you could an edge. See the edge of the that there. See where it's starting to blur. Well, use your chiseled edge on that, and then if you want to come and and do a thicker part in the middle, you can turn it this way. So keep turning your brush different ways to see what results you can get from that. Okay. It's all about experimenting and trial and error 
And I notice people, my students that I teach, and, uh, I notice after a couple of classes, they really know um, so much more because I, I think they're practicing at home the things that I teach them and then they seem when they come to the class they they just fly glide into their paintings and it's wonderful it makes me feel like I really accomplished something it really helped I love helping okay so just play with it until you get what you're looking for now Okay, so not too bad. I'm, you know, when I get the flowers, and they look nice. I'm not too worried. So I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on the edge of those, just to bring it out a bit more. Just going to bring a little bit of a highlight on the edge here. Just add a bit of white to that color that I used. Whatever you color you just used for your flowers, for your flower pots. Add a bit of white to that color and then just add it to the right side. I'm just assuming I'm going to say that the sun or there's something shining on here. Probably let's say it's coming in this way because the shadow is here. So maybe the sun is coming in this way. So we'll, we'll put some highlights on the right side. So the right side of the painting will be lighter than the left side. Okay. And we'll be putting in some shadows and different things because shadows are very important. Put some shadows on the door. All right, see how that changes it a little bit? And it's not bright enough, you can add more. Good. See, just add it to the edge. And when you add it to the edge, you don't want it to be just a white line. Clean off your brush and then smooth it in with the rest. All right. Make sure you only just go over the line that you see there and just blend it in that way. Good. All right. So there's a little, I know it looks a little messy there now, but I'm going to fix all that up. So I don't worry about that kind of stuff. Uh, I wish it could be perfect for the videos, but you know, I just got to show you what I do and things are not always perfect. I'm just trying to fix this edge here. See, so all you do is just go over, just clean up your edges is what I call them. Clean up your edges. You don't want any rough edges. You want your edges to be nice and clean lined. Okay, now. That's a funny looking pot over there on the right, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'm going to fatten it up a little bit. See, I want you to see this because you're going to say to yourself, Oh, I ruined my pot. What am I going to do now? Well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to paint over it. Thicken it up, fix it up, whatever way you think it needs. you got your shadows in there and your highlight. It's a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit. Good. So you work on your painting and get it the way you want it. Don't forget, it's your painting and uh, you make all decisions. Good. All right.